It's time for the Titans to take it to the next level as Mike Vrabel's squad gears up for the 2022 season. And on this episode of Titans All Access, we'll give you the players to watch. Meet Coach Vrabel's best friend, University of Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle, as the two shared similar success in 2021 that neither could have ever predicted. Former Titans linebacker Tim Shaw continues to be an important part of the organization as he hosts the first ever Camp 59 youth football camp. And receiver Robert Woods comes to Nashville. Hear why from Bobby Trees himself. All of that and plenty more as Titans All Access starts now. Derrick Henry, the stiff arm, throws a man down. Get you some. Sacked! Harold Landry. Touchdown, Titans. How about a little finger roll? Throws back shoulder, intercepted fire. Throws ball up there, intercepted fire. Welcome to St. Thomas Sports Park and Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith, and we're so excited that football is here. We're deep into training camp at this point, already into the preseason, and just one month away from the start of regular season 2022. With all that in mind, there are a lot of Titans names that you need to know as August moves on. Here are four of them on Titans All Access. Everyone has had their eye on cornerback Caleb Farley in this preseason. The Titans' number one pick in 2021. Farley played in just three games last year before a knee injury ended his season. But an outstanding offseason has turned into a much-watched preseason, and Farley says he's ready. The defensive back room is a tight room. Absolutely. The support of that group has to be a huge factor, right? The guys have to have a great chemistry, a great relationship. You got to be able to let plays go and, and continue to play the next play because we both know if you make a mistake, it, it could be six. It could be a touchdown. Knowing that the guys have each other back the way we do and the kind of camaraderie and the bond that we share is uh, truly special. And I'm just grateful to be a part of something bigger than myself. Speaking of second year players that Titans fans want to see, Dylan Radins. Radins made just one start in 2021, but in that start against San Francisco, he acquitted himself well. And it's a moment that he will always cherish as it connected him with his late father. You go into the locker room afterwards and Mike Vrabel gives you a shout out in front of the whole team. One of your five best football moments to this point. My dad was a huge proponent of me playing football, so just going out there, being able to start my first NFL game, it happened just so surprisingly. So unfortunately, I didn't have anybody at that game. You're leaving the field and you're uh, just looking around and you just, I don't know, it's just a surreal feeling. And I see Vrabel in the tunnel and like all I can do is tear up and give him a hug. And then that's, I mean, that led into the, he gave me a shout out. Yeah, it's just surreal being able to start and play in that first NFL game. And you just kind of kind of count your blessings. And, you know, I was definitely thinking about my dad a lot after that game. So. Was he with you in that moment as you came off the field? Did you oh, sense that? Oh, for sure, for sure. And then after I got dressed, after the interviews, I went out on the field, soaked it in even more. But yeah, it was, yeah, he was definitely with me there. Kyle Phillips is a fun player to watch. The rookie wide receiver from UCLA combines an uncanny ability to get open in the slot with also excellent punt return ability. The punt return numbers. Why are you so good at returning punts? Yeah, you definitely got to be a little fearless back there. So, you know, I had that, and then uh, I just had really good coaches. Coach Boston and Coach Sage really taught me everything there is to know about being a punt returner. And then from there, you know, I just had a lot of great teammates who were really selfless and made some good blocks for me. Not being the biggest guy in the world, where does the fearlessness come from? Playing football at a young age, my dad always taught me prison rules. You pick the biggest guy out and you go hit him in the face. And so that's, that's how I started playing Pop Warner. You know, we do drills one-on-one -on -one where you get to call someone out. And, you know, some people would call smaller guys out, but my dad raised me to call the biggest one out. Do you think he surprised people? Absolutely. You know, most people don't even think I play football. When people find out I play football, you know, they, they kind of have to take a double, double look at me. What will surprise no one? Quarterback Malik Willis's speed. The rookie from Liberty has a big arm, yes, but his legs? Deadly. How fast are you? The last time I ran, I ran 427. 427. 437. 437. 437. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't give me that. Uh, you're going to give me in trouble. Have you ever been caught from behind? Yeah. 
But that's different in football because you can be tired. You can be anything. <laughs> don't let well, that fool you. Just don't let anybody catch you from behind now that you're with the Titans. Nah, facts, facts. Yes, sir. Still to come on Titans All Access, cornerback Christian Fulton heading into year three. And he's got increased confidence. We'll visit with him. But coming up next, Titans head coach Mike Vrabel and University of Cincinnati head coach Luke Fickle. They're best friends, but they also have something big in common about last football season. We'll tell you about that next. Welcome back to Titans All Access. When Amy Adams Strunk hired Mike Vrabel to be this organization's football coach in 2018, she knew she had a defensive-minded coach who'd been a success at every level of football where he'd ever taken part. But there's another part of Mike Vrabel, a friendship that he has that ties right into his coaching career and also into the last 30 years of his life, culminating in a special 2021 for both of those friends. Amy Wells has the story of Mike Vrabel and his best friend, Luke Fickle. Believe in it, practice it, preach it, demand it out of each other. Demand it out of each other. I couldn't be more proud to be your coach. Tennessee Titans head coach Mike Vrabel and University of Cincinnati coach Luke Fickle have been friends since they met nearly 30 years ago on Vrabel's official visit to Ohio State. The two played together. They lived together. They coached together. With a former teammate, they started the second and seven foundation together. Fickle was the best man in Vrabel's wedding. In 2021, these best friends pulled a remarkable double. Luke Fickle was named college football's consensus coach of the year, while Mike Vrabel was named the NFL's coach of the year. If I had told you back when you were in college, when you guys were roommates and Mike Vrabel's making ramen noodles in the kitchen, that you would be the top college coach. And in that same year, Mike Vrabel would be the top NFL coach in the National Football League in that year. Would you believe me, honestly? No, no, not, not, not the way he acted in college. Maybe me, but no, 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 no. I can't, uh, I couldn't imagine that. Luke Fickle actually got Mike Vrabel into coaching. In 2011, Fickle was named Ohio State's interim coach, and Vrabel retired from the NFL to join his staff. A decade later, both were voted the best in their respective fields. But for as different as their personalities can be, the two share an odd trait. When they talk about the game of football, they start to sound the same. Their facial expressions are eerily similar. Even the intonations in their voices are almost identical. I mean, we spent a lot of time together. We spent a lot of time under John Cooper and his coaching staff. And, you know, I never worked for Jim Trussell, but I know that Luke holds him in high regard. And I would try to listen to some of those things that, that Luke would, had learned from him. You know, you have a style and, and there's things that you believe in and you, and you try to, you know, get the players to understand it. I, a lot of credit to how we grew up, you know, what was in our homes and the expectations. But then we really grew up, I think, in that system with, with coaches and people that we respected and trusted. And, and a lot of it is what we heard then. Nearly 30 years of friendship between Luke Fickle and Mike Vrabel is hardly a secret. What is new is the level of success and recognition as football coaches went up a notch in 2021. College football's Coach of the Year, the NFL Coach of the Year, a friendship that developed while playing with a special group of guys at Ohio State. When I reflect back on what does my program want to be like, it, I want and I look at that group of guys that we had and, and what it is that we did together, whether it was successful on the football field or not. It was, but the, really the bonds and the things that, you know, that, that really last a lifetime and really make us who we are. You know, because these four or five years in our situation, my situation, when they're 18 to 22, incredibly impressionable. Oh man, he never cut corners. You know, the team was always important to him. You know, every job for, for Luke wasn't the, the best job. He always did what was best for, for his family um, and, and what he believed was right. And that was to, to be patient and, uh, and to also uh, try to build something like he's doing in Cincinnati. Luke Fickle and the Cincinnati Bearcats opened the 2022 college football season September 3rd against Arkansas, while Mike Vrabel and your Tennessee Titans play host to the New York Giants on September 12th at Nissan State. 
Coming up, a visit with Christian Fulton, the Titans' star cornerback entering year three. But up next, one of the newest Titans, wide receiver Robert Woods. He comes to Nashville with a reputation as a great teammate, and he's already excited to be wearing two-tone blue. Stay tuned. There aren't any words that will do Robert Woods the justice he deserves for what he has meant to me over the last five years. The standard for what it means to be a pro about your craft. The standard for the sacrifice required to elevate the people around you to be their best. The standard in walking the walk. There is no doubt in my mind the incredible impact he has had on the transformation of the LA Rams for the better. Success is found in the mud. And the only way to affect positive change is by getting your hands dirty. I've appreciated his respect for this and his willingness to get his hands in the dirt so he could leave his fingerprints on this organization. The culture we live by, the attitude we take to the field, the mentality in which we prepare, all molded and shaped thanks to Bobby Trees. Thank you for everything, Woody. When Robert Woods played against the Tennessee Titans last November, he had a great game, seven catches for 98 yards. Now, after a trade in March, he plays for the Tennessee Titans. Robert Woods got a special introduction to Titans fans in May at the inaugural Titans Foundation dinner. He had a chance to sit down for a special interview with a national figure, Charles Davis from CBS Sports and NFL Network. Here are some of the highlights. I'm not sure everyone understands just how much you wanted to be a part of this. Coming from his previous team, the Rams, where they said to him, where do you want to go? This team being consistent, making the playoffs, uh, being dominant, really should have been there last year. Uh, sorry, we had, to, we had to take it. But really just, just seeing, seeing how dominant they were all around, a balanced team, balanced on the ground, balanced in the air. This is, this is an organization and team I want to be a part of and join, and I felt like uh, I just wanted to bring my, my attitude and my game and kind of build on to what they already were, was doing. My receiver coach in LA, he used to tap me on the chest and I say, all right, Rob, I'll see you in about four hours. And, and really that's because I really get into the zone, really getting his mindset. So you get in that game and you want to be dominant, you want to be the best player. When your team believes that you're the best and you can't be stopped, there's really nothing that, that can stop you out there on Sundays. Where did that aggressiveness and blocking come from? I believe my, my first year playing football, I was on the defensive side, played defensive end and linebacker. Uh, never really touched the ball for about three years of, of playing and then get into college, get into the pros and not being able to play defense and be physical. I learned that at our position, our receiver position, it's not all about finesse, it's about being physical. You get up on them and like Mike Tyson said, when you, when you punch somebody in the mouth, you really see how, how tough they are. And The quote was, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Exactly, exactly. Last year, your team won a Super Bowl. But unfortunately, you couldn't finish the mission with them. The, the competitor in me was was really bummed that I that I got hurt. And we're talking about plays. I'm, I'm able to be on the sideline, be in the, in the suite, and be able to have a different view. Being able to be out there on the field at the Super Bowl. I've been in this Super Bowl position before, and we lost. And uh, there's no way we was going to have that happen again. Your sister, who you tragically lost a number of years ago, and I believe her last words to you were, I want you to be a model but not a runway model, a role model. Yeah. And I was, I, was in, I was in high school, I was a freshman in high school, it really didn't process to me until really like my junior year being able to elevate my game as a football player and seeing young guys, students come up to me and tell me that they watched me or watched my game and uh, really like setting the standard. Like, like my sister, she, she battled cancer. She was told that she had three months to live and end up living three years. So really that fight is, in me, I believe that nobody can really tell me anything I can't do. Shedding the wisdom, the, the, the more I could give to them, the better this team is going to be. He's bigger than you, he's faster than you, he's stronger than you. And I always just say, all right, but he's, he's not better than me. And that was just that one thing that I always used to just stick in my head. It's like there's always going to be somebody who's going to challenge your game. In the NFL, they're always going to be trying to replace you. And my, my biggest thing was just work, 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 never being complacent. Like I said, going on in year 10, they're always going to be 
guys that they're going to try to replace me with, but as long as I can hold them off, as long as I can, I'm doing my job right. Ladies and gentlemen, your newest Titan, Robert Woods. After the break, Christian Fulton talking confidence, entering year three. More Titans All Access coming up. What's going on, big dog? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How we That's doing? Much, man. Excellent, man. Yes, sir. We had a great day last time we was out here. Hey, we got to keep the consistency, though. It's not about having one good day. We got a stack day, stack day. Let's go, stack days on three. One, two, three. Let's go. We got a pick. Hey! Let's finish the thing, man. Oh! I'm trying to set you up. I'm trying to set you up. Welcome back to Titans All Access. When Christian Fulton entered the NFL in 2020, he did so without the benefit of a traditional offseason. Going into 2021, he put in a lot of work and it paid off as he blossomed as one of the Titans' brightest young stars. And now as he goes into year three, confidence. Hear more about Christian Fulton in his own words in this week's Nissan Insider. All right. One of the common themes of the 2021 season has been Christian Fulton made a huge jump from year one to year two. Do you agree with that? Why did that happen if you do agree with it? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely see, but I feel like, you know, I didn't really get a chance, you know, to display my talents in my first year, I would say, you know, just with the injury and just getting comfortable out there. So, I mean, the reason why, because, you know, just just a better mindset, you know, heading into year two, you know, a more clear view of things with COVID and, you know, being a rookie, you know, just learning the league. I felt like that was happening year one, year two, you know, I was more comfortable, you know, I, I had a, feel, a better feel with the defense. Just coming in for OTAs, I think that was a, a big uh, help for me. So it was a lot of factors, you know, that played into it. How much is confidence a factor in your improvement? You know, that's just been a big thing with me, uh, you know, heading into this year. I know I can go out there and play with anybody, you know, it's just playing at a high level and where I want to be at, you know, just personally, how good I can play. So it, it's been big for me, you know, just trying to keep that confidence level up. Uh, you know, if I if the corners in the back end are playing with a high level, the defense is going to follow right behind that. Who is a current NFL cornerback that you aspire to be for the Titans? Probably I'll say Tredavious White. Having played with him at LSU, you know, just seeing how he goes about the uh, game and how he prepares, you know, how he's gotten to where he's at. So that's kind of the uh, guy I want to model after. What in your game do you have to do better to be a Tredavious White kind of player? Uh, everything, you know, uh, tackling, you know, like having mental lapses, you know, it could be one play or none, you know, it's just little things, you know, that I look at every play, every game that I try to, you know, implement or into the next game, you know, to make my game better. Is there something from this year that you're most proud of? Hmm. Uh, making it to the playoffs, you know, it's, it's not easy. You know, I heard that so many times, you know, just in the last two years, you got to get there first. And we made it last year, but we're making stuff like Braves told us, you know. The other year they were fighting to get in the playoffs. Last year was the division. Now it's, you know, the number one spot. So I'm proud of the team, you know, how far we come. But we got a lot more to be excited for, I feel like. Mike Vrabel has been very complimentary of Christian Fulton, but he's also talked about wanting to see you be more consistent. What does that mean to you when he says that? Just being locked in the whole the whole game. There's been times, you know, where I've had, you know, a couple mental lapses in the game. And, you know, I take those things very personally, you know, those things, you know, stick with me. You can make a play every now and then, but just giving up that one play, you know, that could change the whole game. You know, it could be a big part of the game. So uh, just getting those out of my game and, you know, just improving weekly, I think that would be big on me for consistency. It's often been said that once you're a Titan, you're always a Titan. And that's especially true in the case of former linebacker Tim Shaw, who came back to St. Thomas Sports Park this summer for a very special event. We'll show you that when Titans All Access continues. Former Titans linebacker Tim Shaw was diagnosed with ALS in 2014 and retired as a Titan before the 2017 season. But he's been a consistent presence around St. Thomas Sports Park since then. Whether on the sidelines or during games or at practice throughout the year, Tim Shaw has been around and has been an inspiration to the organization. This year, he hosted the Camp 59 Tim Shaw Youth Football Camp at St. Thomas Sports Park in late May. 
Basically, we're honoring Tim Shaw. Um, such a great teammate, a great player, uh, such a great ambassador for the Tennessee Titans. I mean, it's just somebody that um, is selfless, uh, that, that loves being around here, that loves providing and giving back in any way possible. Man, something bad happened, but it's made him an even better person because he loves the Titans, he loves coming in, he's a part of our family, and he used to do a football camp every year. Whatever you are doing, give it all your attention and effort. Having Tim Shaw speak to us, uh, you know, just hearing him and what he has to say and what it means to him, uh, being a part of this organization and um, having a camp like this to bring all these kids out here, free football camp, uh, that was my favorite part. That does it for this edition of Titans All Access. When we see you next, it'll be a story of returns the return of regular season football will be preparing you for the Titans and the Giants regular season opener at Nissan Stadium. And maybe more importantly, the return of Amy Wells. She's back from maternity leave. I hear she has a beautiful daughter. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for watching. Wow. And we'll see you next time.